Why, hello there, everyone. So, we've talked about a lot so far, but today is one of my fun topics because today we get to talk about web fonts. Think about it this way. When we create a document in a word processing program like Microsoft Word, which I have YouTube videos on those too. If you haven't seen them, check them out. We can format text in those programs by changing the font. But if you think about it, the font comes with the program. So the font is on the computer. Not all computers are created equal. So when we look at web fonts, we need to keep this in mind and have backup options and backup on backup options in order to ensure that no matter what computer our website's being looked on, that it looks how we want it to look like. So keep that in mind. This limitation does make it challenging for us to ensure that our web pages appear consistently across other devices, but there's things we can do to help limit the variation. Now in CSS, there are five commonly used font stacks. Now we accomplish this by specifying multiple font families and we specify the font family for the text of an element by using the CSS font family property. That's font slash family property. The value consists of the names of one or more font families which are collections of a single typeface that has similarities. For example, the Arial font family contains characters in the standard Arial typeface including italic and bold versions. Every operating system has some font families installed by default, but different operating systems have different fonts installed. This means that not every browser or user agent has a given font available for rendering. To bridge this discrepancy, CSS enables us to use a font stack as a value for a font family property. And a font stack is literally a list or a stack of fonts, if you will, in the order of preference separated by commas. So we're saying use this font, but if that's not available, use this one. If that's not available, use this one. And if that's not available, well, heck, how come none of these are available? No. So it will go down the list until it finds ones that it can render depending on their device. Now what we always want to do is have a generic font in our family, usually at the end, the lowest of the totem pole, that when all else fails, at least use this generic font family and those are usually just your serif or sans serif fonts. The serif has the fancy little edges on the corners like Times New Roman and then our sans serif those are clean edged fonts like Arial. Now after we play around with fonts a bit we'll even talk about custom fonts but that's another video. So let's start playing with some fonts. So down here at the bottom I created some paragraphs and I assigned them the IDs and what we're going to do is style them with the specific font family and then for IDs I just did the abbreviations wide sans serif, narrow sans serif, wide serif, narrow serif, and then monospace. And then what I'm going to do, I know I tend to type my CSS in advance because I want to make these videos short and sweet, but I know you also might like to watch me type some of these babies out so I'm going to go ahead and do that in this video. We'll just speed it up a little bit and play some cool music while I do it. So here we go. Well, wasn't that fun? Now, extra bonus points for those that caught that I did something different with the text that's in red here. The reason why these specific fonts are in quotes is because they're more than one word. If it's one word, you just type them, no quotes. If it's two words, in order to tell your browser when it reads the code that this is all one font, you have to put it in quotes. So the fonts that are two or more words have quotes around them, the rest do not. And you may have also noticed this editor wanted to keep adding the extra quote when I typed it and I had to keep deleting it. So 
<laughs> just keep an eye out. Make sure you don't have extra quotes in there. Make sure you don't always end your declarations with semicolons. And notice here we have the sans serif, sans serif, 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 and monospace. So those are our default or generic fonts that in the event these aren't available on the computer to use these default fonts. So now that we've done that, let's run it and see what the differences look like. Pretty neat, right? So we do see some very small differences with the first two lines because what we chose for our website was indeed a sans serif font. Do you remember what it was? More bonus points? Uh, let's go back into our code here. We'll go up and Tahoma or monospace if that didn't work. Notice what I did there? I did pick a sans serif font, but then I picked a generic font of monospace. There's no rule that says you can't mix it up, and that's what I did there. So these first two lines match this second line here. As far as the font, they're the same because it was available on this device. This, if you look close, you will see that it is different slightly than the second line. It is wider. There's more space between the letters than down here. So notice it's tighter. So that's the difference between the wide and narrow sans serif fonts. This is a wide serif font, so it would be Georgia or Palentino. And then this is a narrow serif font. And then finally, this is a monospace font. So let's look at what fonts were actually applied on this specific device so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm in Firefox. Just like Firefox, Google also has great developer tools. I'm going to open up the settings here, and then I'm going to click on Developer. And then we're going to look at the inspector. And then there's our code from our site, believe it or not. If we open up the head, we can actually then open up styles and see our style rules. But what I want to do is I want to actually click over here and click on show all fonts used. So you can see what fonts it used that are loaded in the system, which is a pretty neat feature, just in case you want to see what's working on your device to give you an idea of what it's using versus what it's not using. Now, there are two other font families out there. I know I said five. There's five common used font stacks. But we also have a couple more out there that are used but not used as much. And that's the cursive, which, you know, for accessibility reasons can be hard to read. So use sparingly, probably just for certain logos or designs, but not for your body text like this. And then fantasy. So if you want to look what that looks like, let's see what's loaded on this computer here. So down here on my final line where it says curry or new, I'm just going to go ahead and wipe this out and we're going to type in um, cursive as our default. And then let's see, hmm, what's a cursive one that I can think of? Maybe, let's see, let's try monotype. For Siva, and then the only other one I can think of is Comic. It's kind of popular, so it's probably on this device. We'll see Comic Sans, and then Cursive, and then yeah, let's change the second one up too, so I can show you the fantasy. And let's try Papyrus. I'm not sure if that's going to be on a Mac computer, but. Some of your users may use Mac computers, so you need to make sure you have a backup if you do use a font that's not available on a different platform. And then impact, and then for our generic family, let's just go, our generic category, let's just put fantasy. Let's run this and see how it changes. And <laughs> there we go. The fantasy still is pretty easy to read. You could probably get away with using that, but I would probably want to use something like that just on the sidebar. And this is a monospace a font. Well, it's not monospace. <laughs> we changed it. This is the cursive. So we have the fantasy and cursive. So there you go. I hope this video was helpful in introducing you to the world of web fonts. There will be more exciting videos ahead. I hope you subscribe so you can stay tuned and be notified as I continue to build on this library of learning for web development. I will make developers out of you yet. And with that said, I will see you next time.